On Father's Day, we remember our fathers and we come to appreciate, if we're lucky, all that they did for us. If you think about it, many fathers spend much of their life working in large part so that the family will be supplied. And fathers have the, uh, a, a unique position, especially in the lives of boys, to be able to bring a sense of confidence and self-respect to them. Unfortunately, for many of us, that doesn't happen as thoroughly as we'd like it. And I think a large part of that happens because uh, the male in our society has been cast in a particular way and it makes it hard for that nurturing side of the male to come out. This actually goes along with um, a theory that life is basically in two parts. And in the first part, there's this idea that you're building um, the container for your life, the container or you're building or climbing the first mountain of your life. There are several metaphors for this. If you're building the container for your life, you're building what it takes to have a successful that life. That should be the beginning. But at some point, you should be initiated into a wiser state, one in which it is not about winning and losing, but one is realizing that the complexity of life uh, it's winning and losing together, for instance, brings us depth and takes us to a deeper understanding of the nature One of the things. ways that we are initiated into life. If society doesn't initiate us into life, if it doesn't have a formal way of initiating us into the second phase of life, one of the things that will initiate us into it is essentially a stumbling, a failing, uh, a downfall, a reversal in your life. So maybe all that container that you built begins to crumble. And in, in that time period, you, you're really humbled by it all. And there is a diminution of the egoic conditions that we have set up. We, we fall, we tumble, we fall apart. When you have had the fall, when the great fall is coming, has come and gone, or you're in it, you be can begin to develop a non-dual way of seeing things so that you see that the fall was part of the resurrection, that you can see that your loss was really the beginning of your deepening. And if you can do that, then you, you, you actually are being initiated into the second half of life. In the second half of life, the object is not really just to gain more stuff. It is to become wiser. I can imagine many of us have fathers who are in the first half of their life when we're young. They are cast in this role of being the enforcer of what is right, of being the one who is the corrector, they're not the ones who are saying, tell me more. How did so that make you feel? Pushes us as a society into a place where children are alienated from their father. The father may be working all day, giving his best for his family, but the return uh, is often not felt back because we don't know how to connect with him and he doesn't know how to connect with us. So we have this gap between the child and the father. And if it's not dealt with soon enough, it will leave a perhaps indelible in impression upon the life of the child. I think what's missing in much of our relationships at home is this honest sense of vulnerability that you can say something to each other without fear of losing um, the sense of honor and respect, that we are afraid to divulge something for fear that we may not be accepted as we are. Either that is a father to a child or a child to a father. And I think some of the best fathering that can be done is one in which you actually do your best to live your life as strongly and confidently as you can do, and yet at the same time, you're willing and able to honestly and compassionately admit to others that you don't have it all together all the time, that even though you're trying your best, sometimes you fail. 
And even though you may look as though you're the stern one, that your heart breaks open for the, for the young one. This would be so healing if that could be more normative in our culture. If we can be our own fathers in this time period, it would mean that we would learn how to talk to ourselves, not from the voice that we received as children, but from a voice we choose out of our wiser states one that treats ourselves with compassion, one that gives us our acknowledgement of our own accomplishments and is there for us without excessive condemnation when we fail. That we listen to ourselves in our own sorrow and loss without wallowing in it, without becoming uh, incapable of action, but we listen and we feel and from that place of feeling, we move forward with strength and also with a sense of tenderness to ourselves and to those we meet around us. This is the day that we honor our fathers as they were, knowing they did as well as they could. Many of them did great jobs, some did average jobs, and some did poor jobs. But our job as a human being is to re father ourselves, no matter how good our father was, to take their example and either improve on it or emulate it. Let us be grateful for our fathers. They did the best they could. They gave, and many times they gave more than we know. So it is with love and happiness toward our future and toward our present that we say Happy Father's Day to everyone. Everyone, may you have a happy Father's Day. May you know love and acceptance for yourself and your Father. And may this be a day where reconciliation, where appreciation, and where love abound. And so it is.